Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Woo-wee! I could have gone louder, but we're in the studio. There's 17 people conducting business around us. They're real adults. They have jobs, Jerry. I'm going to come right out on the record. The studio is the biggest mistake we ever made. Oh, They're going to come in here come and, 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 and sell jail, the cat for this thing. And jail us. I mean, <laughs> literally, we're sitting in here right before this. I mean, I got to whisper. We're I know. We're sitting in here before. Where are the cameras? We're sitting in here. Having a nice conversation about, you know, uh, rape. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I just hear, well, we got to pack it in 48% in the third quarter or else we're going to blow each other. Yes, I yes. Just, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking every detail. I can hear his exhales. I can hear the person on the phone. I heard a lady queef. This guy's at Merrill Lynch. He did 9-11 behind <laughs> us. I heard the whole thing. Woo! We're screwed, Jerry. They're going to kill us. Yeah, and uh, I, we, we can't do the podcast. We have to just talk like regular people. We have to I just know. be like, I know, it's sunny out there. The good news is it's free coffee and uh, you can shit in a bowl and leave it. Well, so. speaking of shitting, I got to tell you. Please. I just went to the bathroom. It's a communal effort here. Bathroom. I don't know which camera to look in. This this one? Yeah. All right. Camera A, yeah, we'll call one. it. Uh, plus, I got two comments about the studio. I want to kill myself. Don't read the comments. They're got, not good. They're comment. really it good. It was a direct message. Some oh, guy got my number off geez. of you know uh, Grinder and, and messaged me. <laughs> he slid into your DM, they, as the kids say. He slid into my BMs. He's got shit all over his dick, and I got ass in my nipples. Watch but, out. That's how you get AIDS. But <laughs> I read that recently. Really? Yeah. I was joking. No. Somebody with AIDS comes right inside your butt and... Is Next thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. Come delivered? I didn't know that. I thought it was blood. Oh, well, the blood, because I think there's tearing, there's tearing in the asshole, sound. but then the cum goes into the bl- the tear. Right. Come in the tear. <laughs> That's a band. <laughs> come in the tear. It's like a, what do you call that? Uh, au pair. Oh, I was thinking like a Swedish metal band. Ah, come in the tear. shame. What is it over there with the Nordic honkies who love that deep, Satanic metal. Well, it's cold. I think it's well, cold. It's cold in Boston. Well, we got see, we got some rock and roll, but we're also it's America. You know, I think up there it's also dark for like forty eight days a year or something like that. Same with the Eskimos. Right. They uh, they got that insomnia movie. We all saw that with Al Pacino. Are the Eskimos real or is that a myth? Oh, they're real. I used to live with two. <laughs> they kept the apartment very cold. Eskimo Vaughn. Um. <laughs> Mo Vaughn was a baseball player. <laughs> Mo Vaughn. I, I was thinking of Mo Green. Eskimo Green. There you go. There you go. Eskimo Love. Pie. Oh, yeah. Klondike Bar. You know Mo Pie? I don't know Mo oh, Pie. He, he played lacrosse. <laughs> All right. But anyway, so I went to the communal bathroom over here, and I imagine everyone's going to get to know us. We're the new kids on the block over here. Well, it's New York City. Let's not forget. There's a real keep your head down and move on vibe. I suppose so. By the way, there's some food in the fridge that what? I imagine you'll be taking. I didn't know that. I'm, and it's not labeled. It's just like there's oh. a Gatorade bottle, a, a lasagna. And no a, label. I mean, that's that's <laughs> the end of that. That's that's open game. I mean, it's uh, it's rabbit season. Well, I don't care for labels. But I went into the bathroom. Label baby. Um, baby. <laughs> I went into the bathroom and uh, someone's taken a, just a vicious duke. I think it was Chuck. <laughs> I mean, you look like you take bad shits, oh. by the way. No. Oh, what rap, are you rabbit kidding? shits. What? Yeah. Rapid test. Those don't work. No, you look. You got the look of a guy who takes <laughs> weird, weird shits. Ah, uh, I could see it. Yeah. Little blood. Mostly rabbit, though. Blah. All right. I see you with impractical jokers on the iPhone just dropping <laughs> soup cans in that bowl. <laughs> but to each his anal. <coughs> well, anyway, someone is stinking it up in there. So I went to piss. And you don't want to shit shame. No. Everything's, everyone's against the shame. You can't shame for anything anymore. But shit, so, shit. We all shit. We're all we're all in this together here. Number two. Well, we all shit. You don't shame for a regular shit. You eh. shame for a bad shit. We don't all shit like this guy. Go True. take a peek over there. I, I will. Shit like that. I'll get a, a whiff of the bowl. I'll put my nose right in that puppy. But it's everybody poops sometimes. Nice. But you don't. 
<coughs> it's I still got a little long cove <laughs> going. Long cove. But um, you don't want to shit in an office like this because you can see the sneaker. And I, I thought even he's going to see my sneakers. And so I, d- I made the executive decision not to wash my hands because I didn't want to be in there any longer. Ah. But then I thought I got recognizable sneaks. Yeah, the big red. So I had to go back. Yeah, like I started out. And I had to be like, whoop, you ever make that noise when you pretend you yes, forgot something? Yes, yes. I was like, oh. And so I went back in and washed my hands. But don't you think it's... Chuck, what are you doing? That's the loudest crinkle ever. What are you, opening a diaphragm over there? What was that? Going for a lozenge. I'll, I'll stop. Uh, what is the blue lozenge? I got red lozenges. Menthol. Oh, oh good. Oh, you got a little throat maker. jizz? Meh. Uh-oh. I get some dust allergies. Okay. Okay. I'm good. Well, anyways... Wouldn't you rather not wash your hands? First of all, I don't even believe in washing hands, but you know, wouldn't you rather I'm not wash you. your hands than sit and stew and of fucking course. build shit? I mean, I go into the airport, I whiz, I do this, I let the water run, and I get out of there. I don't like wet hands. Well, I don't put the water on the hands. I just fake it. Oh, that's what I mean. I don't want, I don't, I fake it because I don't want wet hands. I don't I'm want wet you. hands either. Who needs them? And I'm going to be touching stuff, and, uh, you know, we got to build an immunity. I think, I think there's something to spreading the germs. It's good. Get it and spread it. That's my motto now. Yeah, spread those cheeks, and uh, we gotta, we gotta, you know, we gotta germ up this nation a little bit. Everybody's purelling. I had a guy. I'm still looking for apartments, by the way. It's the realtor guy showing us around. He would go into a place, purell. You know, after he touched the doorknob, then he would show us around. He would open a door, purell. I'm like, you're gonna kill yourself. Your hands are gonna disintegrate. You're just wiping them with chemicals all day. I sat next to a guy on the plane. I told you he took the little thing they gave him, which I've never used ever. I've never used it either. And he just smeared everything. He just wiped everything. Yes, yes, just they go to town. Single thing, and I'm like, listen, pal, I'm gonna be picking my nose and shoving it in my ass and farting on your mouth when you sleep. So totally. I don't know what to tell you, but are you done with the village? Just admit it. The village sucks. It's a shithole. It's horrible, and you don't want to be there. Just say it out loud. Well, I mean, I, I love the the deep village. You walk around on Perry Street, Charles Street, Bleecker, all that by the water is beautiful well, by I'm Sarah talking, Jessica Parker. I'm talking 2022 village. No, it ain't the it's same. horrible. My whole dream was to get to the village. Dylan, McDougal Street, the Comedy Cellar, Bohemia. And then now it's, uh, it ain't Bohemio, it's Thunderdome. It's just hobo, I'm dodging shit, I'm like a guy in a monkey cage, and uh, I gotta get out. It's horrible. I'm, I hate the walk from the cellar to the Village Underground. What? It's a half a block. I know it's a half a block, but it's a fucking haunted house of a half a block. It's a That's half a haunted true. house block. There you go, it's an HHB. But, yeah, that cut left, first of all, you cut left, you gotta go by the Barker. Ah, uh, the Barker, Bob. You know, Bob Barker, yeah, you know the guy who goes, uh, hey, free comedy show, free comedy, and then he goes, oh, hey, and you go, hey, and you feel guilty because he's barking, and mm-hmm. you're going to a great show, and that's just part of it, I guess. I have guilt over that. I had this happen yesterday with a friend who, who shall not be named. Do you hate this? I hate this. Uh-oh. You say, you yourself say, I've never seen this, and then they go, No. They disagree, but I'm like, I'm not saying... Hey, let me just give you this thing. Hey, give me the thing, Fatty. I'll give you the whole Lay situation. Lay it on me, sister. I saw a female barker. Okay. And oh, I say, I've never seen that. Thank you. <laughs> this is why you're a good friend and a better podcast partner. Hell Oops, I yeah. gave it away. Yes, and <laughs> so, <laughs> I've actually seen it multiple times, but I'm going with it. I say, I'm joking. I'm like, I've never seen it. I, I say, you never, which doesn't mean... It's not a statement, I've never seen this. You understand the difference between I've never seen that and yeah. you never see that. Of course. One is colloquial. Yes. You know, one's like, uh, it's an expression. You never see that means you've seen it, but not often. Yes. I've yes. never seen that means I've never seen that. Agreed. Right? You're with me Agreed. so far. Very with you. Shit you're, in my mouth. You're a good friend. I try. You never see that shitting in the mouth. See? Right, right. I've seen it, but I've, you never see it. It's on my wallpaper. Thank you. Boy, yes. What a good pal you are. Anyway, so I say, I never see female barkers. You never see that. And then he goes, no, there's lots of female barkers. And I go, well, I, I've never seen one. And he goes, no, they're, they're everywhere. There's tons oh, of them. Oh, I I'm hate like, this. I'm saying what I've seen, and yes. you're disagreeing with what I've seen. I, I'm so with you. I'm not saying there are no female barkers. Right. I'm saying... I've never seen a female barker. I myself, with my eyeballs, I've never seen it. He's like, no, no, no. There's lots of them. I see them all the time. Well, this is, you know what this is? This is some kind of like, this guy's trying to push some progressive thing on you, which is fine. I'm glad there's female barkers. I think women should be barking. But he's pushing (laughs) this thing down your throat of like, oh, no, they're there. Like, yeah, yeah, I know, but don't put your bullshit on me. I just haven't seen it. Exactly. And... uh, 
Not only should be barking, they should be leashed and caged. Agreed. These women. Like the kids at the border. Too good for too long, if you ask me. Yeah, like, look, I've never seen a black guy be on time. You never see that. <laughs> but my point is, I'm with you. I get this with this one. This is this is my version of that. You go, uh, somebody goes, uh, hey, uh, the, 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 the garbage man's on fire, and you go... <laughs> That's well, that's something. Goes. I'm not joking. I'm like, I know. It's still funny. That's why it's funny. It's because you're not joking. But they go, I'm serious. I'm like, I know. Right. But I can still have an involuntary laugh. I can see why you're, that you're serious. That's making it very funny. Yes, yes. When they go, no, no, I'm serious. I'm like, I know, but I still found it funny. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Yeah. It, it drives me nuts. They go, hey, this kid is uh, his, his pants fell down. I go, that's pretty hot. He goes, no, no, no. I'm, it's not a joke. I'm like, I know. I'm turned on. <laughs> The kid's pants are down. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I mean, this is just serious trouble. Call in right now. one eight seven seven offended if you're having trouble with the episode. I think I hear the guy next door. Boop, beep, boop, boop, boop. He's calling. <laughs> I mean, th- th- there's no way we're surviving here. No. We have to get the thick blankets and the whatever. Whatever it is, the eggshells. You know what we should do is put some uh, caution tape on the door or, like, under construction. We'll throw on some vests and get a couple <laughs> drills in here, and they'll go, oh, it's a bunch of fucking rude-ass, crazy construction guys. That's not bad. Not bad. Because people, nobody respects a construction no. guy. People assume construction guys are retarded because yes. they've heard them before. I've never seen a retarded construction. You see how I did that? But I no. like that. But yeah, yeah, we get some hard hats, we get some steel toe boots, we say a couple N words, get a car like a cruller, and a, you get a bear claw. We'll come in here with a with a big vest and a belt. Well, I gotta say, we could pa- Chuck could pass for construction because he's ah. a bit. Well, if he lost the glasses. Okay. Mm. But he's chunky. He's got a flannel on. But we're not construction guys. I well, mean, you're no. very handsome. I mean, I, I'm a fucking, I got glasses. Well, we give you the clipboard and the weird <laughs> tripod with that thing on it, you know, and you go, oh. Well, okay. what are you? You're like a model. You're, what are model? you talking what about? You mean, model? You what got you abs, you're tan, you get laid. Well, you used to get laid. I mean, now you probably get laid still, but the one person. Sure, sure. She's, she's, but I mean, you're, you're wearing like, out. you got cool sneaks. You're wearing nice clothes. I mean, you can't. Yeah, this was free. These were free. I mean, look, I'm just saying, I could come in here. I could put some blackface on. I'll, I'll doll it up a little bit. All right. Well, you, maybe. Maybe get we a could. a bad s- haircut. I'll do it like a black out of tooth. Well, it's yellow. Okay. Sorry. I mean. Yellow. Stop Asian hate. Either <laughs> way, we'll make it work. I feel like we can pull off construction. I might get invisible. I don't know. I'm working. Really? Sorry. That's a big jump there. Yeah, man. it hurt. It hurts. It hurts. I mean, your teeth are, it's like a continental shift. They got to go over time and just pop into place. It's a big deal. I read Steve Buscemi. He said he never did because he gets the roll. So maybe I'll get ah. some roll, but I'm not getting any rolls. I'm getting rolls in my stomach, but sure, uh, the sure. yodels. Yeah, well, it's, he's the funny looking guy. What was it on the Fargo? Uh, just kind of a funny, just in a general sort of way. Yeah, yeah. He's got a kooky mug, that guy. Yeah. You ever see that one uh, Ghost World where he's uh, he's trying to bang Johansson? Yeah, I saw Ghost World. And then he's particularly ugly in Billy Madison when he uh, crosses the name uh, out the and lipstick. puts the lipstick. Ugh, that, that scene, it was funny, but it was jarring because it was so eerie. Quite jarring. Chuck's making a face. What's the face? Something wrong? Nah, I'm just looking at the settings. All right. Oh, shit. All good. Everything's good. It's not good. But yeah, Buscemi. Big fan, but... Great guy, sweet guy. I get to hang out with him. Hang out with him a couple of times. Volunteer firefighter. Yeah, he was really something. If I could do it all over again, I'd probably be a fireman. What? I think I would like successful. That. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, if I people you know. that are unsuccessful say that. <laughs> really? Yes. If I could do it all over again, I would do this. I don't know. You're a hero. You hang out in the truck all day. You got a pole. You're eating chili. You got the the warehouse. Well, I got to tell you, I've spent a lot of my time with firemen, and that's what I wanted to be. That was my dream. Really? More than comedy, because I wanted to follow the family footsteps, the whole thing. Irish, alcoholic, the whole thing, herpes. Exactly. I don't like to work, you know, just take naps. Right, right. A lot of time off. But... You had to be a paramedic to become a firefighter what? in Massachusetts. And then to be a paramedic, you got to put the needles. And I hate the needles, Jerry. I Wait. just want to put fires out. I don't want to sew anybody. That's a, uh, what do you call it, mandatory? I believe so. Ooh. You can literally hear the phone ringing. You know? Yeah. Not, not the, ri- like the ring tone. Like he's making a call. Like Oof. his phone isn't ringing. He's yeah. dialed 911, I assume. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you yeah. You just hear the... <laughs> <laughs> I know. Jesus Christ. Well... 
This could be the last one, folks. Wherever we go, we'll take this at least. But anyways, I wanted to be a fireman, but that's that's what deterred me from my dream. They were like, eh, it's right to be a paramedic. And I was like, I don't want to be a paramedic. That's horrible. That. Yeah, I'm out now. I didn't know that. I thought it was carrying a fat lady down a flight of stairs. You got the, some soot on your face. you know. Or how about that uh, that circular thing you catch guys with on the roof? Trampoline. No. I think it's a trampoline. No, trampoline, you bounce. This you catch. Ah. Uh, Tramp. I think it's similar, though. It's similar. But it's it, it's it, something a lean. It gives, whereas a tramp is taught. Maybe it's Lady Olean. Ah, because you're not a tramp. tramp. Tramp, you go up and down. I like it. Is that clever? That's something. I can't tell anymore. <laughs> Chuck right. didn't care for it. You're lean. <laughs> lean, you got, you got time to lean, you got time to trampoline. Um, I'll tell you who's not lean. Chuck. Ah, oh, always back to... Body shaming, Chuck's disgusting figure. Uh, <clears throat> but any tits. No, firemen are fun. That's a good gig. But I think if you, what you mean is if there was no comedy or if yeah. you couldn't, be, if, there was, if you had to do something else, maybe. But if you had to do it all out. over again, I would do everything the same. You're doing very well. Well, I think you have to be 35 and under to get in the fire squad. I could That's be. president. Ah. President's 35. You got to be 35 to be a president? Yeah, isn't that weird? That seems high. I think it should be a max. It should be between 35 and 65. No yeah. one in particular making me think this. Well, somebody's got a great joke. But like Biden's, what, 80? I don't think he's 80 yet, but oh. I think he's like 78 or 79. Can we get a ruling on that? Who's got that joke about it? Like if your Uber driver was as old as Biden, you'd be like, this guy shouldn't be working. And then yet he's in charge of the free world. Well, I think people talked about I think Mar said that a bunch. I don't know if he did oh. it as a bit, but he okay. kept saying he's like, in no other profession would you think the best candidate is 78 years old. Of course. Any single job, you wouldn't be like, we should go with the 78-year-old. Yeah, yeah. What do you got? 79. 79. Oh, okay. Good yeah. year. Right there at the end. <coughs> He's um, the oldest, right? So oh, far. Oh, I think so. I think it's not even... Oh, well, Ronald Reagan might have approached 80, but he wasn't elected. Uh-huh. Anyway. Well, back in the day, people didn't even live to 79. You know, like Hoover probably died at 61. Yeah, I suppose so. Mm. Sucked up something. <laughs> it's gone from suck to blow. So let me let me throw this at you there, Please, let's jalopy. get into some business here. I uh, had, a, had a bit of a fun little... Uh, Aesop's fable. What do you got? Anything? He's the oldest. Okay. Biden's the oldest. R Reagan was seventy-seven when he left. Yeah, and right. so now Biden's seventy-nine, so he beat him. And that was a nineteen eighty-five seventy-seven, mm -hmm. which is a little shakier. Yeah. Oh, he was shaky. A little Michael J. So go down to Bridgeport, Connecticut. Up, up for the stress factory. Sorry. Uh, not a bad gig. You get to fly, you don't have to fly. You drive in. It's an hour and a half. We left early. Me and Marcus Monroe, good egg, funny guy, nice guy, sweet kid. And uh, I had a little little fun moment happen. So we do our show. It was horrific. I ate my ass. I got heckled for six hours. Yeah. One of those shows where you get off stage, you're like, oh man, I feel like I got my. I feel like I was in a fist fight at a bar. Yeah. And then you got to go say hi to everybody, which is also brutal. Probably shouldn't be doing that with Omicron, but hey, to each his anal. You don't have to. Yeah, you're right. So we get out of there. We go back to the hotel. We walk the two blocks, go to the hotel, and uh, I've had a couple pops by then, and there's a guy behind the glass. Everybody's doing the mask down here now. I think that's just where we're at as a country. Yeah, well, I think when it's required, but you don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. He didn't. This is a bullshit hotel. It's a bullshit town. He didn't give a fuck. We didn't give a fuck. So we walk in. And I go, what's up with breakfast? And he goes, uh, it's uh, from 6 to 11. I go, ooh, how's that work? Is that complimentary? And he goes, you got to have a breakfast pass. I go, how do you get one of those? He goes, I don't know. You got to you gotta get one. And I was like, what? huh? And I think they give them out to people they like or Girl Scouts or presidents. I don't know. So I go, oh, how about this? I give you free tickets to the show. You give us a couple, uh, a couple breakfast passes. And he goes, done. Nice. Yeah. And he's You're a like regular a, Gary Menke. Yeah, he's a super a super black, gay black guy. So then we get the passes. Beep, beep, beep. I put him on the list. I go, he'll never show up. Whatever. Wake up the next day, jerk off, go down to breakfast. I'm the only guy there. The waitress walks up. She goes, you got your pass? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes, just put your pass down when you're done. Be on your way. And I go, great. Free shit. It's all covered. I leave. I go, oh, I want to tip this lady. No cash. Mm. I forgot my whole wallet. So I go, I'm going to... my hips off. Killed <laughs> So what do you do? I get by. 
So I go, I'm going to leave, and uh, I'll, I swear to God, I'll come back and get some cash. I swear, and she's giving me like, nah. Mm-hmm. Sure. So I leave, go up to my room, key doesn't work. Ah. Shitbox Hotel. Go back down, get the key fixed, go back up. So now it's been 28 minutes. Sure. On the way down, I go, let me hit the gym. I do one quick pull up, you know. <laughs> come back down. She's gone. But I go, I want a tip. I throw a couple bucks on the table. My ear pods were on the table the whole time. Interesting. So it's a whole little lesson there. Well, tell me the lesson. The lesson is... I wasn't listening. I came back to tip to do the right thing, uh-huh. and I got my ear pods. Ah. If, I had not, if I had flown the coop, I would have lost my pods. So it was like, hey, you, you got rewarded for doing the right thing. Interesting. Raycon. Yes, that's what they were. Raycons. <laughs> they were Raycons, no question about it. Exactly. I mean, that, I that's a fun story. I mean, I like that. I Doing mean, the right thing pays off. Yeah, it's no Shawshank Redemption, but, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a little lesson in, in being a good guy. Coming back and getting the jizz. Yeah, you got if you don't get the jizz, you can't swallow the cum, is what I say. Ooh, I think that was uh, Matthew 108. McConaughey. Yes. All right, all right. Oh, that's Bible. Did you read Bible at all? Oh, did I read Bible? I was in Bible study. Oof. Oh, tell that's me about embarrassing. it. I'd like, please diddle me. I'm dying here. This is so boring. <laughs> please. Nerd alert. Yeah, well, I went to Catholic school. Right. Forced. My dad said, you're becoming a bad seed. You're a bad egg. You're a bad comic. You're going to Bible study. <laughs> they had some good points. And uh, so I, I, I had to get out of public school. I was hanging out with the uh, the brown kids. Wow. Threw me right. Up. I had a fucking tie on. It was like out of a movie. I had slacks. And what age are we talking here? 13, it's funny. 14. With your slack, you have to wear slacks. Ooh, I was a slacker. Yeah, you're a slacker. Now you got to wear slacks. That's something. Now you're slack E. Man, if that was 88, that would be really cooking. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was brutal. I remember my first day, I walk in with my dad. Because he had to uh, like enroll me. What grade again? <laughs> ninth. Oh, with your dad. Well, I mean, seeing with your dad in ninth grade, you got to take your own life. It was uh, it was like before the school year started. I had to get in, and you have to take a you have to take an interview. What do you have the keys? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was the summer. There's stuff going on. You know, right. kids are running around. Sure. I walk <laughs> in. A kid trips me. That's my uh, first interaction with Catholic school. Uh, Big black guy trips me, fall on my ass. They all start laughing. It was wild. My dad goes, come on. He's picking me up. I go, I give the guy a look, and that was it. We got to get him on the show. I know. If you're the big black guy from Catholic school that tripped Mark Norman, call in please. immediately. We got to get you in here. I would love. I mean, he's a funny guy. He killed. I was just the the the, uh, the the fall guy. Oh, I'd love to see his big black cock really close to my face. Sure, make we can my make wife that watch. happen. I could get on Craigslist right now and call a guy. Probably a bigger guy. Well, is that Craig from Madison? Huh? The rapper turned oh, comedian. Oh, two chains. He's no. a black guy with a dick. What's I his assume? name? Serious name? Serious. Serious XM. What's his no, name? No, Sincere Life. Sincere Life. Yes. That's Craig. it. Shout out to Sincere. Hey, Craig. Good egg. Did he Did he get rid of Sincere? Is he like Prince now? <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't All talked right. to him in a minute. Well, either way, high school was tough. Yeah, high school's hard. Well, high school was great for me. I loved it. We had a chapel. What the hell's a chapel? Well, you go pray. <laughs> we had to go to church every now and then. I mean, it was oh. a nightmare. Oh, this is just appalling. It was bad. I was thinking of, what's it called? What's the guy? My uncle's one in the Air Force. Priest. You go talk to It's not a priest, but it's similar. Chaplain. Oh, is that a what chaplain. A, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. Ch- is that the right word? A chaplain. I've heard a chaplain. Yeah, yeah, chaplain. You go talk to him. He's like a guidance counselor for adults who have I, like shell shock or something. I never knew what that was. I was a chaplain. Chaplain. I didn't know what it was. I think it's a religious y thing. You might want to give that a Google give that too. A Google. I think it's uh, chap L A I N. Yeah, but I think it's not full religious because he doesn't mm. give a shit. He's not going to church or anything. It's just borderline. I think you're a guy that sits in a hut and then says that. He's got a mustache, so I guess that's allowed. Okay. He gets a hut? That's pretty good. <laughs> I don't know if it's a hut, but it's All a right. box. Maybe. Pizza hut. An office? I don't know. Sunglass hut? <laughs> <laughs> Why they get a hut? I've, I've seen it. It's in a mall. There's no hut. It's a, it's a kiosk at best. I think that's the, 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 the pitch. <laughs> the, the branding. Straw, the branding. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> we're on a beach. We're living life. We're in the sun. Everybody hut. loves the beach business. Yeah, but the funny thing is actually being in a hut is a nightmare. You got no AC. You got no floor. I you got no running hut. water. You got no bathroom. What do you got on a chaplain? Chaplain. 
Yes, gotcha. A member of the clergy attached to a private chapel institution ship branch of the armed forces. Oh, interesting. Okay, you so I, I half got it. But got I think it was close. So, so is my uncle a, a priest, though? He doesn't wear a, a collar or anything. I mean, this guy, he's, he shoots guns. This he's got a, a mustache. member of the clergy. I think that's pretty open. Okay. You know, there's bishops, cardinals, you know, pastors, whatever, right? He hasn't been to church since 1981, I don't think. I, don't I mean, know. this guy... I think no, it, it's just like a, going yeah. to a therapist. Yeah, he's like a therapist, I think. Like, I think like a back, religious therapist. Back in the day, your priest was the therapist. But you go, I got a problem. I got to go talk to clergyman Johnson. And remember, he would come around, and your mom would go, oh, let me make dinner. The priest is here. Mm -hmm. We didn't do any of this stuff. We were cool. Looking back, I'm like, we were cool dudes. We <laughs> didn't mean, do any of this horse shit. We didn't do it either, but uh, I saw it happen. Ah, you can't backtrack now. You got a tie on. You're getting tripped by a black. Well, Something's I had up. to wear a tie. I yeah. had to do it. I, I don't know, It was know, part man. of the uniform. I don't know. You're a suspect, if you ask me. Hey, my I parents. think you pray. <laughs> All right, maybe I pray. I've been prayed upon. I, uh, I, I saw a priest prayed. have a stroke on stage in front of me. What? We were. At my, I went to a Catholic school, and the, the priest had a stroke on stage in front of the whole school. Where's wow. your God now? Huh? Yeah, yeah, it was. He was. That was the funniest he's ever been. Now who's stroking it? <laughs> uh huh. Coming to join you, honey. Yeah, uh, that's see. exciting. My family was church. When I was a little bitty kid, my grandfather, he was in the church. He would hang out at the church. Oh, you see? You're you're in there, too, there, Dickless. But I put my foot down. But my grandfather, I remember being like a young kid. He participated in some sketch or something, and he sketch? got pied in the face. <laughs> what is this guy, in the Groundlings? <laughs> It was your uncle. Because it was no grandfather. Oh, what? He was a grandpa was groundling. He yeah, he took a pie in the face, but I remember being a kid and I didn't understand the context and getting mad. I was like six. Mm. And I was like, these sons of bitches just fucking pied grandpa. And wow. I wanted to I wanted to get some black I wanted to trip him like you're black. Yes, yes. <laughs> Big black. You didn't know about the uh the pie joke. Well, I didn't know what was going on. I was I was three years old. I had a tiny dick, and I just went to go to talk to God. I didn't understand any of it. I thought it was stupid even then. I always hated it. But there was people shouting about, and my grandfather went up and said, hey, you break it up, boys, and then they hit him in the face oh, with a pie. That's a cool grandpa, though. A yeah, super cool. I mean, he's like the coolest. Well, the whole family's gone to shit since he died. But Yeah, well, yeah he, he was the nucleus. So, two things about the pie in the face. It's a weird gag because it's not actually a joke. It's just... I guess it's like a cartoon slapstick bullshit. Two, I'd like to eat the pie. Well, I think it was. I think when you get pied in the face, it's just shaving cream or whatever. Well, that was my third thing. I got pied in high school. It hurts. Nobody. It's it's I tin. Bet. It's just the, the the foam does nothing, and then you get the tin hand, and they, they like to really mush it for effect. And you're like, hey, I got a nose here. <laughs> yes. Who knows? I mean, yeah, it's, it is a hand of the nose. Did you ever have to check your for Bo cancer? Knows. Huh? Did you guys do the cancer, cancer. check? Cancer. I got it up the ass. <laughs> What are what? you talking about? Bowel. We did the check the cancer. You had that. that. Maybe this is a New England thing. What the hell? Check the cancer. You'd say you'd say to a person, do you know if your hand is bigger than your face, it means you have cancer. Uh, and then people do this, and then you smash their hand into their face. Wow, that's pretty violent. And it would really hurt, but the thing was, you could have just smacked me in the face. Right. I don't understand why you had to make me feel stupid and use my own hand. Well, it's all about the feeling stupid. I think that's the gag. But you could just be like, hey, your father has cancer. What? Bang! You know? <laughs> I guess, but you don't... Now, if you're hitting you, it's funnier. <laughs> I guess so, but you're hitting me... You're hitting me with the thing. It's but like it, the tin's not hitting you. Guns kill people, or whatever. I don't... I disagree. But the, People but kill people. You're not like the tin hitting Man? me. Uh, you hit you with the tin. Yes, so it's the same with the hand. I didn't hit myself. Well, you the, hit my the, hand, which hit me. The hand is the tin. Right. Rin tin tin. That's what I'm saying. I see. Ta ta. If I only had a heart. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Well, either way, the pie in the face is overrated. I think that's why it died out. When's the last time you see a pie in the face? It's been a while. Yeah, it was everywhere in the 70s, 80s. You know, pre internet, pie in the face was viral. That was like the. World star. It's also weird to just jump to hitting someone with a pie. Like, why not talk it out? Mm. You know? Well, talking it out ain't funny. <laughs> like, it hey, could be. we should uh, work this out. Oh, yeah, this is comedy gold. Well, it could be if you're like, shut your fucking mouth. I'll put my dick in your ass if you don't shut up. I mean, that's funny. I guess that's funny. That's gay porn, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole plot. If you don't shut up, I'll put my dick in your ass. And they go, print it. You know my favorite joke ever. Please. The, uh, the, the two gay men have been married for years. And they're trying to spice up their sex life. Hey, wait, gays are married now? What the <laughs> fuck? I, well, how long was I out? <laughs> Jesus. 
What so, world are we living in? So let me, let me just get right to it. Please. So then the, the two gay guys, and they're married for many decades, and they're trying to spice decades. up the sex life. So it was illegal. Yes. So the, the, the gay man, one gay man says to gay, gay A says to gay B. Uh, KB. It's a bad, you get bit by a dog. Yeah. A poodle. <laughs> or it's a gay baby. <laughs> so he says, <laughs> we spice up our sex life. I got an idea. I'll hide. And if you can find me, I'll blow you. And the other guy says, great. Oh, and then guy A joke. says, I'll be behind the couch. Uh, that's a great joke. I mean, it's a classic. It's a classic joke. You know, <laughs> the other gay joke that was always good, not as good as that one, but uh, guy, there's three guys had to sleep in a bed. You know, they could only afford one hotel room. They're all in the same bed. The guy in the end goes, man, I had this crazy dream that uh, somebody was yanking me off. And the guy on the other end goes, I had the same dream. And the guy goes, what'd you have? And the guy in the middle goes, I had a dream I was skiing. I mean, <laughs> that's a great joke. Come I mean, on. I mean, that is... <laughs> that's fun. He's dying. He's you dying. can't poo-poo the joke. It's cool. I'm not poo-pooing. It's just that joke's been around since the 70s. Well, I'm not saying it's new. I'm not saying it's fresh. I'm just saying it's a classic homo joko. It's okay. It's okay. That's okay. What about this one? All you want right, to go really me. old. I mean, this one's from 82, I think. Bring it on. The older, the better. It's the one where... I, I mean, we got to whisper these jokes. Uh, we got to <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean this, crazy. Is, this is bad news bears. Ooh, wee, yeah. There's no way. Not to mention we're in Manhattan. If there'd be one thing if we were in fucking Indianapolis or something. But it's, it's a gay skyscraper <laughs> for all we know. <laughs> this could be where they shoot uh, broke back. I mean, <laughs> so the, uh, the two guys, I mean, you know this one. This joke's I from hope. the 40s. The two guys are they're fucking in the shower. <laughs> this is the best one. <laughs> you know this one? I love this All one. right, all right. <laughs> They're fucking in the shower in the ass, and the guy says, "Hey, dog, the phone." He gets a phone call. <laughs> phone call in the shower. Well, he gets the phone. Oh, oh, it's thin walls. Wait, wait, it's like wait. this. Hold I'm on. your phone. Start from the beginning. The He's two, in the shower. The two guys, they're of the homosexual descent, and they're having <laughs> gay sex in the shower. All right, all right. That's a big shower. <laughs> they're having sex in the shower, you know, and then the phone rang. It's phone call. Back oh. in the day, there was no answer machine. This joke was written. It's a landline with no see. machine. So he's like, I got to take this call. It could be, you know, Doogie Hauser or whatever. The president, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he goes, oh, don't come until I get back. Ah, okay. Whatever you do, don't come until I'm back here. And the guy goes, all right, you got it. I've never he, heard this. He goes, he takes the <laughs> phone call, you know, he chats with his mother or whatever. Sure. He comes back and there's just come all over the shower. There's semen on the soap, it's on the tub, it's on the shower curtain, it's on his face. And he goes, what are you doing, you piece of shit? I told you not to come. And the guy says, I didn't. I farted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's brilliant. Uh, wow, who wrote that? Mort Saul? I mean, that is a uh, fucking Bill Cosby, Groucho Marx. Uh, is that a Confucius? That is brilliant. I farted. <laughs> it's my favorite joke. I've never heard that. Woo-wee. Oh, man. Wow. Oof, I thought uh, I was seven. I mean, that's because that's you were at Catholic school. We had no God. Well, you we getting Catholic school was where gay jokes were invented. I mean, I, more of a documentary. But still, wow. That is really a hell of a <laughs> zinger. I mean, I was living with the horrible joke. My dad, uh, what, uh, why did Michael Jackson buy the uh, kids' underwear? They were half off. <laughs> you know, that's got nothing on the comfort. <coughs> Whew, that is good stuff. That's a fun one. Man. That's a fun one. Now, there's your clip. <laughs> your, well, I don't know. We'll get banned from uh, yeah. San Francisco after that. Good point. Hey, folks. What's shaking? Tuesdays with Stories is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We've talked about therapy before on this show, and now BetterHelp wants to discuss some of the stigmas around mental health. First off, it's not for crazy people. It doesn't mean something is wrong with you. Talking to a therapist is a positive way to process your life. We both go to therapy, very important, and we're on the road a lot. So the online stuff is perfect. You knock it out. It feels better. You get the garbage out. You work out your muscles, you work out your, you change the oil in your car, change the oil in your goddamn emotions, your life, it's all backed up. You got your family, your dad's a fucking nightmare. You know it, I know it. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. 
It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and you get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. And check out BetterHelp's new podcast, Getting Better, Stories of Mental Health. Oh, I got to get on there. Hear Megan Trainer open up about her motherhood or how NBA Hall of Famer Chris Bosh tames anxiety. And find Get Better on Apple, Spotify, anywhere else you get your podcasts. Support the show and get 10% off your first month of online therapy at BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. Get on it! All right, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you also by Lucy. Look, we're all adults here, and some of us choose to use nicotine to relax, focus, or just unwind after a long day. Hey, I love a cigar. Lucy is a modern oral nicotine company that makes nicotine gum, lozenges, and pouches for adults who are looking for the best, most responsible way to consume their nicotine. It's very hard to uh, quit smoking, as we all know. One of the hardest things in the world. My wife said it was harder than anything she's ever done, including look at my face at night. Mm. It's a new year. Why not start it out by switching to a new nicotine product that you can feel good about? If you enjoy using nicotine, you should definitely check out Lucy's products at lucy.co. That's lucy.co, and use promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Also, I have to read this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Remember, if you're interested in a better way to use nicotine, visit lucy.co and be sure to use that promo code TUESDAYS. Nice. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Blue Chew. It's 2022, so let's start the new year off with a bang. Get it? I love Blue Chew. These guys are great. Chewable tablet works instantly. I keep it in my pocket. You never know when you get in your head. You're getting into a weird moment. You've had too much whiskey. Keep one on you. They work. They last. I love them. Get them. It's easy to do. Why the hell not? Why take the risk? No one wants to let their ladies down. <coughs> Sorry, it's semen. Guys, confidence can take a... Take you far in life. It can also help you in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is an online prescription service that means no doctor's office or waiting in line. Talk to a licensed medical provider and get a prescription online. Ships right to your door in a discreet package. They thought of everything. Blue Chew's tablets offer the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form. Genius. If you don't like swallowing pills, this is for you. Works fast. Take it day or night. And Blue Chew makes everything in the USA. Pew, pew, pew. There's nothing sexier than confidence, and Blue Chew can help give you confidence where it counts. So if you could benefit from extra confidence in the bedroom, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for the Tuesdays. Try Blue Chew free when you use your promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Just pay 5 bucks for shipping. That's Blue Chew, one word, dot com. Promo code TUESDAYS to receive your first month free. I mean, come on. You're getting free boners here. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank BlueChew for sponsoring the pod. Support BlueChew and receive your first month free. BlueChew.com with promo code TUESDAYS. Get on it and get hard today. By the way, it is 175 oh, degrees in here. I think they're here. trying to smoke us out. <laughs> These people hate us. <laughs> Holy hell, it's warm. The there there we go. go. Hey, Jim. Sam Coffee in the iron lungs. <coughs> Check them out. I think you got an iron lung there. You're, you're hocking up a, a black lung. Well, when I get worked up. Oh, yeah. Whew, that was, uh, <laughs> see, those old jokes, man. They really pack a wallop. <laughs> That's good fun. He had a whole lot of cum in his ass. Yeah. <laughs> there was that other one. Where's that other one where the guy, one guy farts and he's like. Pfft. And they go, uh, oh, he goes, who's the gay guy? we got to find the gay guy to, to drag him from a truck or whatever. And one guy farts. <laughs> oh, it's not him. And one guy goes, <sighs> and like, he's the gay. Remember that one? No, I don't remember that one. have to give that, that a goog. That one's... I don't know how you're going to Google might, that. Might be tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Type in P-L-L-L-T-T-T. -T -T. Yeah. B-L-T. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to focus here. We haven't yeah. even. Yeah, I mean, we got to. We, you know what I mean? Sorry. All right. So, uh, what else happened in Bridgeport? I had another thing. Oh, I had a lady get dragged out. It got ugly. Vinny Brand 
And this lady, were, it was one of those things where me and her are going back and forth, and you're kind of like, where's the club? Like, where's the staff? What is going oh, on? Oh, like, yeah. I know those. It was out of control. And look, I get it. Nobody wants to work. Nobody gives a fuck about their comedy club. It's like working at Applebee's, basically. You know, it's a club. So there's no care. There's no pride in your gig or whatever. So I'm just like, what is going on? And the whole audience is going, kick her out. Kick her out. Kick her out. And I'm like, yes, I agree. And one guy goes, why don't they kick her out? And I eventually go, I don't know. I guess the club doesn't give a fuck. Oh, boy. I lost it because I was like, what are we doing here? I see waitresses going back and forth. I see management going back and forth. And eventually they, they get her up, and she's going, don't fucking touch me. Da, da, da. We got the whole thing on tape. Wow. Yeah, and they're pulling her out, and she's like, I was laughing. I, I literally have her on tape going like, roast me, roast me. Come on, bring it, bring it, bring oh, it. I'm like, bring it? What do you think this is? I have an act. I'm doing a comedy show. I got a zinger about a gay guy coming jizz all over the farting. So it got pretty ugly, and they, they drug her out, and the boyfriend stayed. Oh, my God. The boyfriends always stay. Well, they, they want to the see boyfriends. a show. They're paying. Yeah, I hate these people that are like, get me involved, roast me, make yeah. it about me. It's very strange. It was weird. And it's weird to drive there, pay the fee, park your car, get your ticket, and be like, I'm going to ruin the show. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't. I, I don't know if it's like, is that their intent going in? Or it's got to be a, there's a seedling in their head when they're heading there. I maybe, maybe, and I think the booze kicks in, and I think she's like, everybody's laughing. This is a fun show. He's being irreverent. He's, I'm going, hey, look at this gay guy. Look at this black guy. Whatever. And she's like, me, me now. Ah, uh, I guess I don't know. I can't figure these people out. You want to get into a room with them and just go, what is it? What's your deal? What do you think a comedy show is? That's like what the show I wanted to pitch that no one's buying. I think about this show every six minutes. It's just like the the get to the bottom of it. What's happening? What's going on? Why are you doing that? And you you need other people to go, no, no, you're wrong. You need like eight people with you to go, no, no, you're wrong. Because they just think they're right. They're like, this is comedy. You can't handle it. This is what we do. We heckle. Well, it's like my thing from last week or two weeks, whenever it was, the guy cutting everyone in line, where I'm like, why do you think 11 people are mad at you? Yes. You're not thinking that's weird exactly anyways yeah, so we're could, better than everybody it got it got kooky but uh <laughs> you know there's this new show now uh have you heard of this where they you know people with the shopping carts they leave them anywhere they shit in them they put them up their ass people are very uh loosey-goosey with shopping carts okay and now there's a guy who goes out there and he goes what are you doing oh i've seen that guy and he shames them yeah i saw that on a clip somewhere 99 percent of the time they snap they're in the wrong they leave a cart in the handicap spot or whatever it is, and he's like, what are you doing? And they're like, what do you mean? He's like, you can't just leave a cart there. And they're like, I was going to move it. And it's a very interesting look into the human psyche because you fucked up. You were a dick. I called you on it, and you're mad. Right. Because you feel <laughs> shame. Right. Well, to be fair, though, the one clip I saw, the guy kept harassing uh, the person. Oh, well, that's not good. And after a while, it's, it's kind of like we, t- well, we talked, I guess it was off air, but we talked about people that will purposefully upset somebody and then be like, look at them snapping. I don't like that. I don't care for that. So there is some of that. There's an aspect of that. Because the one I watched, the guy kept being like, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. You'll, you grab it or whatever. I mean, the guy, it starts off with somebody doing something shitty. Yeah. But then the other guy is like, well, you're just harassing random people. You're being shitty. After a while. I've noticed that, you know, a lot of these Karen videos, the guy holding the camera is a bit of a Karen himself or herself. Right. And you have to, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. It kind of takes one to know one. Ah, you spot it, you got it, as we it say. Smelt it, dealt it. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've noticed Departed. a lot of these uh, Karen callers can be a Karen in their own right, but they might be like a black guy, so nobody assumes they're a Karen. Mm. So you can't judge. A Karen, there's a Karen in all of us. No judge. <coughs> Here come yeah. the judge. It's not a cough, it's a, it's a, it's a tickle, it's a, a PND. A PND? Post nasal drip. Ah! By the way, I had a great moment at the stand the other night. Please. I was at the stand. Five shows in one night. Don't you love five? You don't have to go anywhere. Uh, wait, the same club? Upstairs, downstairs. Oh, I love it. It was the best. And we had a good hang. Great hang happening. We had Ari Shafir. We had Rich Foss. We had Steve Rogers, Isabel Hagen, some other people that I don't know, but they seem nice. You know okay. Those people? Did, they, did they hang back, or were they trying to get in the middle? What do you mean? You know, sometimes you got some new guys who you don't know, and they they're not the core group, and they try uh, to pop they were, in. They're hanging, they're okay. hanging around. Um, it was a good good hang, all night hang. But that upstairs room is 
tough sledding. Oh, every time. <laughs> Same material, 10 feet below, murdering. You go up a flight of stairs, 10 feet above you, bomb fest. You can't believe it. And the people downstairs are like, this guy's great. It's yes, fun to yes. see. They're one of the great comedic minds. Yes. You go upstairs and those people are like this. This guy sucks. I he hate He sucks you. and he's stupid and I hate him. Yes. It's, it's wild. Fascinating. And it's all lighting. It's all pipes. Isn't that weird? The light, if the lighting is good and the room is good, you're a genius. If the lighting is bad and the room stinks, you're a fucking loser. I equate it to a strip club. You go to a strip club, the right music's playing, the, 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 the place is decorated, the lighting is good. Then you go upstairs and you got the same chick in a, in a Target. Just, yes. Just doing this shit in a Target with no music and you go... This fucking woman's insane. Yeah, she's crazy and she stinks. She's got a C-section scar. Her kid's on the side of the stage, and uh, you know she's she's got a dick. I think he stinks, and I don't like him. Yes. Um, Five sets. But did the sets? What was I gonna say about the stand? I can't even remember. Uh-oh. You had a great oh, night. Fuck. Five sets up and down. What the hell was it? Set of stairs. That the Good stand? room. Bad room. I hate you. Great hang. Rogers. Great hang. Newbies. Hang. Good times. Oh, God, I lost it. You know, it's it. weird. There is a green room at the stand, and I don't feel like anyone's using it. I went in there the other night. It was just Sarah and I. That same night, we were just sitting down there, and it was like we were in our living room. You feel stupid. Yeah. Because you're like, what? We could have just done this at home. I guess it's, yeah, I guess you're right. If another one came down, what? You see the show, and then I'm gone. But it sounds like a fun weekend. Yeah, it was all right. Got yeah. some work done. Got some videos. Got some fun footage. Let me ask you this. Bit of a cliffhanger. How'd you get there? What? How did you get to the gig? Remember last week we were talking about your transportation. Ah, uh, well, you got my head, fatty. So what'd you do? By the way, I brought it up to the lady at home, and she was like, oh, yeah, what are you, crazy? You can't drive there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm always afraid she's going to hate me and be like, what's no, he talking about? She's Fuck with him. You. He's an idiot. You, you, you're quick to think the hate. She loves you. Yeah, I don't know. I'm suspect. All right. If you're not blowing him, he assumes you hate. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes some people, not everybody, some people don't blow, but they they like. I yeah, got a vibe. She likes. She likes. Well, girlfriends often hate the friends because they're like, I don't know, I, I don't like, I don't know what he's putting in your head. Sure, sure, mm-hmm. I get that. But a lot I'm of a, girlfriends hate me. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, you got that right. But <laughs> I'm a, but I'm a, I'm a good influence. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sober guy. I'm going, hey, be careful out there. But you got to realize you're putting out a vibe now. So then she'll go, I hate him. Or no, he so hates she, me. So she hates me. No, no. She you hates, said it. That was Freudian. He hates Everybody me. Everybody heard it. But see, you think, you worry so much that she hates you that she's probably, like, that you're maybe weird around her, and then she's like, oh, well, he hates me. Well, I'm in the house. No one wants you in the house. That's the thing. Wait, we why, did the wait, podcast in the house. You. Not the podcast, though. That thing where you're like this, go hide in the bedroom for an hour and a half. We're going to say some slurs over here. Yeah, but she'll come out. She'll chat with us. Uh, that that happened chat, all the time. Good chat. Okay. She makes an F, and she feels that you don't make an F. I make an F. Are you kidding me? I said hello to a woman that I thought was her that wasn't her. Yeah, that didn't help. Yeah, I thought that would help. You're intimidating. See? You are. What are you talking about? I thought, How you, am hated, I I thought, I thought you hated me you for months. See? What are you kidding me? I, thought, I, I was like, I love this guy. You he won't absorb me. it. You're just like, whoa, what are you kind of like? No, listen, this is something. I love you. I love you. Wow, are you hear. kidding me? You should hear the way I talk about you when you're not around. <laughs> oh, I'd love to hear that. You big fat fuck. <laughs> you hear what he says in person. Wait, what was I going to say before? I'm not intimidating. Nobody's intimidated by me. He just said you were. I am. But you're I a was. bitch. I was. I you're was. a little I'm bitch. Not, I'm not a bitch. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet down, you bitch. <laughs> intimidating. I'm not intimidated. How you am just, I you just, intimidating? You, you, I was like, I was like, you know, I want to be friends with everybody. I want to be cool. That's and, how she and, feels. and Mark's like, come sleep in my bed. And you're like, hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm out of here. Just because I hate the majority of people I meet doesn't mean I'm intimidating. <laughs> Not intimidating. That's not the right word. Scary. Well, wait, it's what was cold. It? Cold. Ooh, cold. I'm not cold to me to, for a little bit. Now I know you. Now we're it takes cold. a minute. It takes a minute. Just for a minute. I mean, uh, cold. I all right. Well, this is getting. Weird. I exude. <laughs> you <know>? I exude <laughs> warmth. You do it now. But you're, you're challenging him on the way he felt about you. Well, that's the, well. That that's um, the reason I'm challenging him is I have never been called cold. Ever anybody? In fact, I've been called quite warm. Well, you're and very warm. I do think, not saying you're not nice. I do think you're warm now. So that's why I'm challenging. So you're saying it's a good point to challenge. No, no, I'm saying you're, you're saying he's saying I'm cold. Of course, I'm going to challenge that. No, I think when I first met you, you seemed a little cold. 
But, but you other know what? people have said that. You know what, though? But you're no. a stranger with yeah, two buddies. Exactly. What yeah. am I supposed to do? Well, he was a buddy. He was a warm guy. I, I, Mark I didn't was know very... the one point either, but I wasn't cold. I did your podcast back in the 80s. What <laughs> I are you know, talking about? You hated me. You know what we needed? Like seven years ago, I did your podcast. You're nobody. You're nothing. There's no need to do your podcast. <laughs> you're, right, you're, 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 you're a nice guy. You're right. Your this, is, this is proof that you're a good person. I did your horseshit <laughs> podcast. That was a complete waste of time. You know, we need a chaplain to come in here and work all this out. Uncle Doug. There you go. Charlie. Cold. Get out of here. Uh, at first. At first. At I love first. you. I lo- you know I love you. My ex was terrified of you. But. but she was mean. Think of the shirt. she think, said. Think of the shirt I got you for Christmas. Oh, there you go. Very Great sweet. Shirt. Great Three best shirt. friends. What did I do with that thing? I threw mine away already. Yeah. I think I burned it. Um, All right. But I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, yeah. Crazy night. Crazy weekend. Marcus Monroe drove his Prius. <laughs> Didn't take the, the Beamer out. I got to get that thing started you got to keep that thing running every now and then it yeah it's away in the in the garage i feel it with my car i live in the, car, the garage for like four and a half weeks i'm worried they're turning tricks in it i know did i tell you the story about this thing so i, I have my car in a garage i t- you have to go say hey go get my car we well, don't say that you text car and they go get it i like that and so there's an office there and they have the monitor the security monitor with like nine cameras yeah. downstairs and I'm waiting for my car. I just look at the monitor, and you just see red. Did I tell this story already? No, I never heard it. You just see red blurs go by every th- every screen. It's like this. Like the guy's doing 60 miles an hour in the garage in my oh, car. Oh, wow. And I'm watching the monitor, and it's just a quick blur to the next camera blur. And I'm like, he just got in my car and drove it 50 miles an hour yeah. from the parking space to the elevator. Oh, God. And now if that- he's doing that with your car. Mine's going to blow a rod. The thing's <laughs> fucking 50 years old. My rods and cones are all screwed up. Yeah, I think they high tooled around in there because uh, these guys are pros, though. They can woo, and then they fly right into a parking spot backwards. These guys are good. They're very good. I love my garage. Yeah, my garage is all right. It's a little pricey. The yeah, village, Manhattan's the tough. village. I know. So this is why I'm moving to Brooklyn, probably. Got to get out of there. I put an offer in. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. The wheels are in motion, but apparently the place we like, of course, everyone liked. Brooklyn. It just doesn't sit right. The idea of you in Brooklyn. I know. I'm a city guy. I know, but and Brooklyn is so Brooklyn. Well, but I got some info about Brooklyn. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll tell you off All right, there because well, it's the, private information. The thing about BK is it's huge. We forget. We go, oh, Brooklyn. We right. think of Williamsburg. You think of Bushwick. It's a bunch of hipsters with coffee and lesbians, but... You go down south, like uh, Park Slope, it's all strollers. Then you go over right. here, and it's all Arabian. And then you go over here, and it's all trans. So it's a, it's a microcosm. It's America. There you go. People say Americans are this, Americans are that. You're like, Americans are a lot of things. We're fat. Americans are fucking idiots living in a hut, and Americans are also billionaires on the Upper West Side. Exactly. But we're all ugly Americans. It's all pipes. I do say I get embarrassed as an American sometimes. Uh, they they have all these YouTube clips of like British guys or Australian guys, and they go, they do a geography test with us and them, and we we lose a hundred percent of the time. Like we're stupid. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know anything, and then they go, "Can you name as many Avengers as you can?" And they'll be like, "Hawkeye, Captain America," and they get like thirty Avengers. And they go, "Name as many presidents as you can." They're like, "Obama, Trump." Washington? Washington? Is that something you're like, oh, God, just say say last names. Say Coolidge and Jefferson and Reagan and Kennedy. You can't say Kennedy? I think there's a thing, too. Do we lose something, Chuck? We're good. There's, there's a thing, too, that like I think like 75% of Americans think Ben Franklin was president. Yes. There's a lot of that stuff. Of they that name shit. non-people. But I think I'm British because I know geography. I know presidents. I don't know superheroes, and I got horrible teeth. Oh, wow, you fucking nailed it. Yeah, so, you know, good day, mate. Yeah, you're, you're whitey, you got glasses. Big white, I like... Uh, New England. New England. There you go, you're New British. Which is really just God's gift to America, if you ask me. New England's a hell of a place. Chuck looks like he's taking a shit right now. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. You all right? I'm good. What's happening? Nothing, nothing. Uh-oh. All right. Did We're that good. lady call? Is no, that what that is? I okay. keep seeing that. You and Shelby both, I see a big face. You see this. Like, I'm doing, we're doing the pod. You're having a good time. You just see. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? It's too hot in here. One of the cameras shut off, but I have the two close-ups. Yeah. It's too oh, hot. Right. The camera overheated. Shut oh, up. God. Yeah. Jeez. 
Jesus yeah. Christ. I mean, it's not that hot. What are we on? Uh, I know. Apollo well, 6? It's, it's just it's running for a long time. You know what I mean? Uh, it's the electricity that heats it up. Got it. Plus, on these, on these lights are no joke. Those put out a lot of BTUs. A lot of jizz. Well, we should do some plugs, don't you think? Please, plug my I ass. Got, I keep not plugging dates. First of all, Vancouver... Uh, Vancouver it canceled, but they haven't fucking emailed anybody. Mm. I keep getting people like, hey, is Vancouver not happening? It's not happening. I'm not going, but I don't know why they haven't emailed you. I'll tell you why that is off air. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, the venue is canceled the show. I didn't cancel the show, but right. they canceled, but they're not telling anybody. Yeah, they got to get on that. But, uh, yeah, so I won't be there Saturday, but I will be in Seattle on Sunday, and we're sold out, which Ooh, is very exciting. Is that Laughs? Uh, laughs, Boston, Fun Laughs, room. Seattle. Sunday night, sold out, Omicron on a Sunday, which makes me feel like a big bag of jizz. Oh, you're, uh, you're the man. It's very exciting. Now, you're the man now, dog. And then uh, Hyenas in Dallas, yeah. January 21st and 22nd. Come out to that. A lot of gays in Dallas. I'm supposed to be in Toronto February 12th. I do don't know because Canada's wacky. Hopefully, I'll be there. Atlantic City, uh, February nineteenth, one night only at Ooh. the Atlantic City Theater thing. What's that gig? Is that Emilio? Yeah. Oh yeah. What is that place? Oh fuck! I I did it. It's a good room. Just Google Atlantic City Joe List February nineteenth. You'll figure it out. Yeah, something theater shit. Oh, Bob and then Hope s- theater or something. I don't know. Secret group uh, rescheduled because I had COVID. As it turned out, I'll tell that story next week. Uh, February fifteenth, day after Valentine's Day. We wanted Valentine's Day. They already had something going on, so come out the fifteenth, and then uh, <laughs> Key West, February twenty fourth, twenty five, twenty six, and then uh, oh, March. Wow. I got, I'm in Fort Worth again. I'm in Side Splitters. In Tampa, March 24, 25, 26. And then the big one, the Big Daddy, Boston, Laugh Boston, April 14, 15, 16. And Buffalo Helium, 21, 22, 23. That's in April. So come Hell out yeah. to those, for God's sakes. That's a fun little run. You're going yeah. up, down, left, and right. Bunch more, a lot of warm weather. Excited. All right. <laughs> this weekend I'm in Des Moines. Funny bone, not I like bragging. That. I like that It's one. a good little room, and it's uh, selling pretty well, so let's get those last couple tickets. Syracuse. Apparently that got revamped, and it's a whole new crew over there. Oh, really? Yeah, everybody's raving about Syracuse, wow. which I'll believe it when I see it. Sacramento, we added a show. I love that club. Punchline. Omaha, funny bone. Let's get a steak and a laugh. Columbus, funny bone. There with Fat Chris L. Going to pop in there. That's a great room. Probably the best funny bone. Summit Comedy Club in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Brand Ooh. new. All you Indiana folk, come on out. Let's make it happen. La Jolla Comedy Store. Side Splitters in Tampa. Funny Bone, Cincinnati. Louisville Comedy Club. Dania Improv, which I guess is around Orlando or West Palm Beach. Carolina huh. Theater in Raleigh. La, Stand Up Live in Phoenix. We got a lot of dates coming up. Check it out. Check out the stand ups on Netflix. Out to Lunch on YouTube. I Hate Myself on YouTube as well. Also, stand-ups, uh, season two. Yeah, season two. A lot of people are checking that out. Yeah. Appreciate. Roll it on over. Make it a gay's weekend. And uh, get on the Patreon, folks. Chuck's uh, behind the wheel, and he's making it all happen. He's uh, very nice, a little chunky, and would be a horrible fireman. Give it a whirl. Tell us a gay joke. Praise Allah. We'll see you in hell. <laughs>